Hi, and welcome to Grammar in Use. Today I would like to talk about participle clauses with you. To be more precise, I would like to talk about three different types of use for participle clauses. First of all, we're going to take a look at participle clauses in an adjectival use. Secondly, we're going to take a look at participle clauses and how they can be used instead of relative clauses. And lastly, we're going to take a look at how participles can be used to shorten adverbial clauses. Let's begin with participles in an adjectival use. <clears throat> Let's take a look at those two examples here. We have the sentence, I saw an exciting film. right here. As we can see, we have got a participle in here, namely exciting, and it is used similarly to an adjective. We could also put in, I saw a nice film, for example, and with that it becomes clear that we're talking about an adjective we use here. On the other hand, we have got the destroyed village. Again, we could put in an adjective here saying the horrible village. However, there is a slight difference between those two forms. In the first example here, we have been using, or we are using a present participle. We can recognize the present participle um, by looking at the ing ending. Our second example here has got a past participle. So it says the destroyed village. This is the participle form of the verb. Um, so look, watch out for the ed ending. Those two examples have a very different form and that's important for you to understand. But I'm sure you'll be able to find out the difference very soon. Our first example here has got an active meaning. If we were to rephrase that into a sentence without the participle, it would correspond to an active sentence. On the other hand, the past participle here creates a passive meaning. What does that mean for us? I saw an a film that uh, I saw an exciting film is a sentence in the active. So the film itself is exciting. The film, so to say, does the action thus active meaning. The destroyed village, however, has got a passive meaning. It is clear that the village did not destroy itself, but the village was destroyed by somebody else. So here we have got a passive meaning. This is very for important for you to keep in mind always or very often look at adject, uh, participle clauses and ask yourself is the meaning active or is it passive? Now let's move on to part number two. Let me quickly take out the white box. Please take a look at the following sentence. 
The actor who plays in the movie is, of course, not Native American. The actor who plays in the movie... Which type of clause is that? Think about that for a second. Hopefully, you thought that this is a relative clause. If you did, you are right. This is a relative clause. Let's take a look at how this relative clause looks as a participle construction. Here we've got the actor playing in the movie is, of course, not a Native American. Now we're going back to the part to part one. Ask yourself, does the sentence have active or passive meaning? Meaning, does somebody play actively or is something played by someone else? Obviously, we've got, well, yes, we've got active meaning here. Let's take a look at another example. Plymouth was an English colony which was founded by Puritans. Then the participle. Plymouth was an English colony founded by Puritans. Again, ask yourself the question, does it have active or passive meaning? Especially take a look at the past participles in here. Founded. And you guessed right, here we've got passive meaning. And yet another example. There is an exciting TV show which is being produced on Indian territory. There is an exciting TV show being produced on Indian territory. Does something happen to the TV show? Yes, obviously. Again, we have got passive meaning. Then what does that mean in terms of grammatical rules or grammatical layout? Well, if we have got a relative clause in the active, then we need the present participle. If we've got a relative clause in the active, we need a present participle. That means the sentence is similar to an active sentence. Then what about the other type of relative clause? If the relative clause is in the passive, so for example, if there is a by agent, then we need to use the past participle. By the way, this works the other way around as well. So if you've got a present participle, that means that the relative clause has to be active. If you've got a past participle, the relative clause has to be in the passive. So, how do we translate all that? Actually, it's pretty simple. It's also translated with a relative clause in German. So, our example, the actor playing the role, would be translated as der Schauspieler der, and so on. So just keep in mind how to translate the 
participles translated with a relative clause. So much for part two. We're talking about adverbial clauses now. Before we take a closer look at um, these examples, maybe you might want to think about what an adverbial clause is. An adverbial clause is a group of words that play the role of an adverb. So all the words together play the role of an adverb, okay? So that means this subclause, these are Nebensatz, has its own subject and typically it also has got a verb. Let's take a look at how this works out. So on the left here we find the adverbial clause and on the right side we find the participle construction without a conjunction. So when John got off his wagon he noticed the Indian. Which of the two sentences or clauses here is the adverbial clause? Yes, it's when John got off his wagon. The main clause would be he noticed the Indian. Why? He noticed the Indian can also stand on its own, whereas the sentence or the clause when John got off his wagon cannot exist on its own. How does that look as an adverbial clause, uh, as a participle construction? There's not much difference, but the participle is shorter. Getting off his wagon, John noticed the Indian. Big question, which type of adverbial clause do we have here? In German, we could say it is ein Nebensatz der Zeit. So this is an adverbial of time. Let's move on. As they didn't know anything about the culture, most settlers didn't like or understand the Indians. This is our adverbial clause, as they didn't know anything about the culture. Again, this clause fulfills the role of an adverb and it has got a subject and a verb. But the participle construction doesn't fulfill all these criteria. Here it is, not knowing anything about the culture, most pioneers didn't like or understand the Indians. Which type of adverbial do we have here? This is an adverbial clause of reason. So, so we could say ein Nebensatz des Grundes. Now, let's put a bit more spice in it. Many people moved west because they were attracted by rumors of gold. Attracted by rumors of gold, many people moved west. Please note the participle forms here. Attracted. What does that tell us? Yes, we have got passive meaning here. Now, let's make it even more complicated. After they had heard horrible things, the settlers were scared. So this is our adverbial clause. Let's take a look at the participle clause. Having heard horrible things, the settlers were scared. What do you have to keep in mind when you have got a having and a past participle. So having heard, having seen, having eaten and so on. Well, this describes an action that happened before another action. 
The German word for it is Vorzeitigkeit. Having plus past participle is thus used to put the past perfect into a shorter participle form. Now let's take a look at pretty much the last example that we have. Since they had been told the natives were savages, most settlers never wanted to understand the Indians. This again is our adverbial clause. Let's take a look at the participle. Having been told the natives were savages, most settlers never wanted to understand the Indians. Now on to our last example. Since they had been told the natives were savages, most settlers never wanted to understand the Indians. This is our adverbial clause. Now let's take a look at it in terms of a participle clause. Having been told the natives were savages, most settlers never wanted to understand the Indians. Now we've got a combination of having been plus the past participle. And as you can probably imagine from that red color here, there is something coming towards you. What does having been told, uh, tell us? Yes, you're right. We're talking again about an action that happened before another action. So, Vorzeitigkeit and we have got a past participle and the bean indicates it already, we have got Vorzeitigkeit im Passiv. Now we're pretty much done. One important note towards the end, however. You can always start a participle construction with a conjunction and sometimes that is very helpful in order to, to make the logic clearer. For example, the sentence, slowly traveling west, the settlers were attacked by Indians, is not overly clear. It could either be, while slowly traveling west, these settlers were attacked by Indians, so two actions happening at the same time, or it could be um, or it could have happened later, after slowly traveling west, the settlers were attacked by Indians. Grammatically speaking, there is no difference here. But in terms of content, it makes a huge difference. So much for the different types of participle. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you've learned something today. Bye!